Hi, Pixel Village is back again with yet another video. I am Radha Krishnan. In this video, we're going to examine how to get the best out of your lens in terms of sharpness, color, and depth. The only control that you have in a lens is the aperture. It's by controlling the aperture, you get different effects in your image in terms of the depth of the field. I know a lot of photographers who in their life have never used anything other than 8, 11 or 16. Sometimes 5.6 by <laughs> mistake. It's not their fault. Uh, they never questioned why they were using it. They were told that 5.6, 8 or 11 and sometimes 16 is what you should be using to get the depth in your image. Now you have an access to very expensive, very powerful, wide open lenses these days. Especially, you know, wedding photographers tend to use a lot of wide open, you know, shots. 1.2s and 1.4s. Very expensive lenses, they create a very interesting image. Shallow depth of field, milky bokeh. But lots of them have not even explored the other possibilities in the lens. In this video, what we're going to do is we're going to take one lens. In this case, it's an 85 1.8 from Nikon. In the sense, we're going to shoot one setup from 1.8 through to F16. Later, we're going to look at each image very closely. And I'm sure at the end of the video, you'll be really surprised what a one-third stop difference can make to the image. Over to the setup. So, we don't have a model today. Instead, we have a sofa and a cushion, which has lots of textures on it. So, let's get into the action now. We have the Nikon D850, and I'm going to start with uh, the 1.8. The next is F2, F28 straight away, F4, 5, 6. From F5, 6 onwards, I'm going to shoot even the one-third stops. So, 6, 3, and then the 7.1, and then the 8, 9, 10, 11. I'm going to keep one one-third stop after 11, 2. Then we have our 16. So the entire series of exposure is done. Over to the computer. Okay, this is 1.8 as expected. Very shallow depth of field. There is sharpness, but the depth is less. Then you have the next one. Little more uh, sharpness. Let's go to 2.8 now. Yes, now you can see the sharpness slowly kicking in. F4, overall a sense of sharpness. The feeling of depth and sharpness is now increased. And yes, the 5.6 is again sharp. I'm going to move up to 6.3. And yes, it's nice and sharp. You have the 7.1. Yes, of course, nice and sharp, great depth. And you have your 8, nice and sharp. And look at this one closely. That's a place, according to me, is the sweetest spot of this particular lens where the sharpness is fantastic, depth is perfect. I am sure, you know, by the time it reaches the, you know, the YouTube, it must have gone through many generations of compressions and encoding, etc. You may not be able to see the kind of sharpness that I am seeing on the screen. So for all the pixel peepers, uh, we will upload the raw images in our channel and you know, you can download, process it and see it for yourself. So look at the next image. The next image is comparable, but I can actually see on the screen a small drop in the sharpness. So your F10, let's go back to the F. 9 and you will actually see a small drop in sharpness in f10 this is your f11 the sharpness has reduced depth obviously has increased but sharpness is now reducing this is your f13 uh, f14 sharpness has gone completely and f16 it's actually not there at all let's compare everything from the f9 to f16 which is here from the screen itself, it is as clear as daylight that this image, which is shot at f9, is the sharpest. And of course, f10 is very close, but the f9 to me, again, like I'm saying, it's subjective, though I'm pretty sure that it is f9. Your f10, your f11, f13, 14, and 16, you know, it's undergoing a gradual 
decrease in sharpness. Um, everything together, the F10 is giving a very close uh, contest to F9, but to me, the F9 is the sharpest. F10 is not bad at all, um, and so is these two are the best, of which my personal preference is the F9. So, it's in front of you. Let me quickly explain the science behind this phenomena. Get a sharp, highly resolved image for any lens. The chromatic aberration and the diffraction has to be minimum. Now, for this lens, it's happening at F9. Since explaining these terms is going to take a little extra time, I request you to Google it. It's very well explained in the internet and it's very easy to understand. Now you saw what a one-third stop difference can do to your image. Many people call it the sweet spot of your lens. Many people call it the critical aperture of the lens. So besides the 1.2s and the 1.4s, which I'm sure gives you fantastic image, you know which aperture to use when you require that great detail in your image, that accurate color rendition in your image and the great depth of field in your image. You can find out what is the critical aperture or the sweet spot of your lens by conducting a similar experiment um, in your own home, studio, wherever you are because it's not standard, it's different for different lenses. And in more often than not, this information is not published or it's not easily available uh, for, a, for a lens. So find out yourself what is the best optimum aperture or the sweet spot of your lens. Hope this video was useful. If yes, don't forget to give us a thumbs up, subscribe and share. And if you'd like to interact with us, use the comments column below. If you'd like to take a look at the images that we've shot or you would like to share the images that you've shot, you know, you're more than welcome to do it. And uh, let us know what your thoughts are and uh, how we can improve our channel. Be in touch with us. Hope to get back to you with another informative video soon. Bye for now.